Lowe's has a of actually two in our area veteran parking spots. Oh, um, which is cool, but they really should be like Purple Heart parking spots. Yeah, I won't park in them. First off, there's actually usually a space closer. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say most of those parking spots are for God ever away. Not that I'm complaining, because it is dedicated to whomever, but... Well, I mean, it's it's veteran parking, but I won't park there, because... Ah, uh, ah, uh, don't you say you're not a veteran. No, it's just that, no, I definitely am. But, I mean... <laughs> it... but to thank me for my service shit is that. All right. But, no, the time, I, the time I do park there, there'll be somebody come in in a wheelchair or something, and I'll feel like a total fucking doucher. Because <laughs> at least I can hobble my fucking crippled ass in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make my way up to Pennsylvania one of these days when I know where recoil is gonna be at. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make sure it's on the day he parks in veteran parking. Right. He's like, he's like, I'll show you a cripple motherfucker. <laughs> I'm the triple cripple. Triple cripple. <laughs> <laughs> That's going in B-roll. Okay, I guess we need to start muting out sex. Um, hold on, got it. All right. I will mute out. Mutating. What's DV Radio? DV Radio is for you, the veteran, active duty service member, caregiver, and civilian supporter of the military. DVRadio.net is the online veteran network made for and by veterans. From original shows to syndication, you can find it here on DVRadio.net. In an effort to continue our mission and make better quality shows for each and every one of you, visit our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash DV Radio. Whether you can only pledge $1 per month or that entire million dollar inheritance your uncle left you, there's a tier with rewards waiting for you. So why not keep DV Radio running and get rewarded at the same time? Head to patreon.com forward slash DV Radio now. That's patreon.com forward slash DV Radio. Radio. Please remember the views and opinions expressed by this show or any other show on DV Radio and its guests are strictly those of said individuals and do not reflect those of the DV Radio staff nor the staff of dysfunctional veterans. Let's get it started in here. <laughs> get this party started. This is Barrack Talk. It's DV Radio. Google broke the toilet. And I think I just broke my desk. <laughs> Tonight, Google is planning on taking over the world. <laughs> You can dip Brussels sprouts in chocolate to make them look like cake pops. $15 is a little steep for a bag of dicks. It should be like fourteen sure? ninety nine. I'm pretty easy to please. Not even one touch it as much as I want to. Are you sure? And we just <laughs> went there. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Because <laughs> this is how it is on TV radio. Oh, wow. Yeah, you listen to the podcast there, young man. You're tuned in to WDVR on DVRadio.net. Or by searching DV Radio on your TuneIn app on your favorite mobile device. Because this is how it is on DV Radio. That is how it is right here on Barrett's Talk Live, where you're listening to us on podcast on all those fucking podcast streamers. We're on dvradio.net, WDVR. I'm Bonerwood. We've got DV6 at my house, hoboing it down here. We got Oink recoils in with us tonight, finally, after almost an entire month of being on <laughs> vacation. And Google, well, she wanted to come in late and make a, you know, fashionable appearance. So, how's everyone doing this evening? Wonderful. I forgot. I'm muted. <laughs> <laughs> Not my fault this time. 
No, it's not your fault, but uh, keep talking. I'm going to go make me a, dr- a non-alcoholic beverage. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes, welcome to Merrick's Talk. Uh, Recoil, you've been gone for a while. How are you feeling tonight? Well, I'm disappointed. Why is that? Well, just after I booked my vacation to sunny Iran, apparently we're no longer allowed to go there. <laughs> is that because you're a Christian, Jewish, whatever it is thing person you are? Or Croish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of like life. <laughs> oh, kind of like Careful. life. You guys are telling questionable mat- jokes and stuff and if we share this podcast to Facebook we could be banned right well I've already been banned from Iran might as well be Facebook too <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't. I got, they got the same rules why not fuck it <laughs> <laughs> yeah right that was a good one oink <laughs> now is it do you prefer oink or pig what I've been called everything under the sun, so you 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 go with whatever you you know you feel comfortable with. <laughs> I want to call you what most people call you. you do the old. You can call me anything you want, just not for late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize too. Um, the fuck is this? What? <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect timing. <laughs> My whole fucking Google changed. Son of a bitch. I didn't know Stupid he had a Google, too. Now, see, this is why I like to stop off at your office to get you all straight on computers. and <laughs> <laughs> right. With your with your button-pushing skills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. So. Yeah. So what's so happening anyhow, tonight? I was, I didn't even, I didn't even get off the, the highway in Carlisle. I just kept going because I said to myself, no, I could stop and, uh, you know, pull in his office and, and go, and he'll be out on the shop floor or he'll be behind his desk and his boss will show up, which not his boss, but his partner. And, partner. um, likes to think he's, oh, he might be listening. I'm sorry. We love you. Um, <laughs> but it, 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 recall don't want that. So I said, like, you know what? I'm just going to push on forward. And I did. And I made it here last night. And yep. Last night, almost 11, 1030, somewhere in there. Yeah, not bad. Well, of course, somebody tried to kill me right before I got here. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. So, when I seen that message, the first thing that happened was I started laughing. Because mm. I remember when I used to scream at you on Skype out of nowhere while you were driving. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, what happened was, for the most part, it wasn't a bad um, commute. Uh, well, no, I take that back. From the moment I left Gilsom, New Hampshire, and until I got into uh, Connecticut, bumper to bumper, accident after accident. It was like it was like the first warm day or something. You know how like when it first snows, all the idiots, everybody forgets how to drive. Well, there was not a cloud in the sky. It was a beautiful day, and it looked like everybody forgot to drive. And there was accident upon accident, car fires in New York. I spent more time in Connecticut than it does it takes to drive through it. I spent more time in bumper to bumper, <laughs> but I did make it except for that last ex- two exits before I was supposed to get off. I'm coming down the hill, pulling all this fucking weight, and this truck that had been like like you know he thinks he's going fast, so I'd pass him. He's gonna pass me, and then um you know he does it when I'm going up the hill, of course. But when I'm coming down, get the fuck out of my way. So I'm in the I'm in the cruising lane because I'm not passing anybody. And he comes flying by me, gets immediately in front of me, slams on his brakes to make his exit. When he could have just slowed down and got behind me and taken his exit like a normal person. So fuck the piss. I threw my ear can at him. There's a such thing as normal people. Yeah. Well, anyhow, so I'm here. I'm here. I was down in Mount Airy today, in the bird. But, um, hey, did everybody get their introductory thingies in the way? There's yep, something got, I want to talk about. We got them all uh, introductory. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Introductorized. So last week, following along with this theme, we talked about censorship and how it's time for, you know, the Bill of Rights and the free and and uh, um, freedom of speech to to go across on the internet too, especially in the United States. Who'd have thought we would be like? I mean, some of you guys that are on this show right now are old enough to remember the West Germany and in the Wall and the Iron Curtain and how like we used to make fun of, like you know you couldn't say things you were censored. If you said the wrong thing or you didn't vote the right way in, in communist Russia, you remember yeah. that? I was censored so heavily last week, you guys didn't even know I was on the show. <laughs> uh, well, it's come to it's gotten to the point now where where the page has been the way it's been. I hear complaints all I remember when this page used to post really fucking outrageous memes and all well, we can't do that anymore because somebody will be offended, report it, and then the uh, Allah Akbar's will fucking ban us, you know, Facebook or whatever. So there's pretty much, I'm posting like rated G shit. And guess what, sports fans? I'm still getting banned. Um, they're still censoring it. And now with the, with the year and a half to, uh, the 2020 uh, election, they're really cracking down on anybody that doesn't toe the line to the right. Daisy's here. <laughs> So now we've been warned. There's a good chance, uh, you know, um, I'm going to have to make major changes to the page. But uh, if we continue the way we're going, they're going to unpublish us. I can't, I can't make heads or tails of what the what the rules are on anything. I got banned for, like I said, stuff that doesn't make any sense, and, and they'll label it, but you know, they won't even show you the meme. That's the biggest. Fucking what's what's ridiculous is is you know the page has a following of well over a million, so apparently people actually liked what we used to do. Yeah, well, so I've been sitting here. Look, without the page, and it's not just the page you're going to go after. There, I I did some homework and and talked to some people that are in the know, and uh, and I looked it up online. This this thing that Facebook instituted was a way to combat fake news. You know, and now it's morphed into if if people uh, violate community guidelines, it's a way to get rid of them. So what they do is not only do they unpublish your page, they prevent you from reinstituting another page with a similar name, especially if it's you, if it's your account. They deactivate any similar pages in your domain, like if you're had started other pages on Facebook, any closed groups public groups with similar names i mean they they wipe you like you never existed and you won't be able to come back now i'm telling you this because look this page has done a lot for me and a ton of people out there it's allowed us to do a lot of charity work for homeless vets and the va vets and the va and just a lot of good things uh dv radio spawned out at the farm you know helping homeless vets but I, you know, without the page driving sales uh, to support all these, um, um, what do you call it, projects or good deeds, I, I don't know what to do. It's not like, you know, we spent a, quite a bit of money in setting up this farm for homeless vets. And it's bad enough that Facebook wants you to pay an arm and a leg just to reach your own fans. Uh, uh, if we lose a page, we're in great danger of losing the the rehab for homeless vets. Uh, I'm sure DV Radio would survive even if they deactivate the page. Um, it wouldn't be easy, but it, it's just insane. I went from being homeless nine years ago, living on the streets in a subway tunnel in Boston, to 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 this, and we work damn hard. And we're trying to follow the rules. I mean, I really am trying to follow the rules. It's not like the old days where let's post something for really just to piss everybody off and see how many people we can lose on the page. Uh, we, we, I try to post what's acceptable. But it's it, it, there's no rhyme or reason to it. So just before the, uh, today, well, I'm going to say today, I've been given a lot of thought. So if by the grace of God I can make it, 
and pull this off, pull this out of my ass and keep the page. Um, there's going to be some big fundamental changes to the, how we run it. As you know, right now we post what memes almost every hour. Yeah, you know? hour, half hour, somewhere in there. Yeah, that's been going on for quite a long time. There's there's almost fifty thousand posts you can look back through. Uh, forty forty two thousand, excuse me, excuse me. So I was thinking we're gonna if we do memes. There'll be few and far between. Like right now, we've already started slowing down the spacing from every hour to every two. And then it'll probably drop even more than that. And you'll probably see more. Uh, like one of the things I used to say is, you know, these other pages that stopped growing, they changed their mission. They started off as a ha-ha page and they do good deeds and all that, but they're not growing. I've strictly, the page was born out of humor and the general dislike for the PC bullshit. Um, well, that whole outlook's gonna have to change. Like, we're gonna have to use if we want to keep the page and be safe. I think, I think it'll become more of a less of memes and more of showcasing, like, uh, I don't know, the day to day lives of I, I don't help me out here, like, like the, what we're doing on the farm, what we're doing on the radio, and if there happens to be a a meme that doesn't have any bad words in it. It's non-sexual. Doesn't involve midget porn, and um, you know it might go up. It's not funny. Uh, it might go up. You know, I why can't they? Do, if we're gonna act like communist Russia, why can't they just go all the way and just let us submit our memes through their censor department, censorship department? You know, you know. Or they, or they could just, just send us memes that are already approved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pull a Vietnam air. I mean, seriously. Yeah, what was funny though is that like everybody already knows this. I mean, what you see on other people's pages, if DV were to post it, we get banned in a heartbeat. In a, oh, in, absolutely. It, it's crazy. So, um, more of it. Even with the videos, I have to be careful what I say. We're giving away a free AR-15 this month. They, it's it's a damn Second Amendment right. The United, you know, an American God-given right, and yet we're violating community guidelines. Our shirts are all labeled as political, uh, too political, too political. So we can't, you know, leave me alone. Does not play well with others. Is deemed political hate speech. Well, yeah, we can't advertise. We can post it, but. We're not, you know, one day they're banning it, and the next they're allowing it. Who knows? You know, I don't, I don't know. But People, it's like, look, guys, I'm 53 years old, and you know, I put not, you know, I busted my ass by like, keeping the page scheduled and trying to help as many people as I can. But I, I I'm beat. I'm beat. I'm out of shape. <laughs> Sitting behind the desk smoking two, three packs a day. All the meetings and trying to run the farm and this and that. It's just, it's just like a kick in the nuts. It's a kick in the nuts, you know. I, I mean, wanna... I'm grateful for everything I I have and and that we accomplished. But um, if this goes away, I'm gonna be left holding a pretty big bag of fucking shit. Cause <laughs> you know, I went from being homeless, living in a subway tunnel, to owing the IRS and and fucking debtors and mortgages and fucking oh my god oh i know let me let me add on to the videos thing a lot of people keep asking when are we getting videos up on youtube and stuff like that or the biggest reason we've not actually got any videos up other than the podcast and you know trailers and teasers and stuff is because if you say one curse word i don't care if it's damn or hell or fuck, they will demonetize that video. And if we ever got into monetization, we would make no money on any of those videos whatsoever. So we're having to find another platform that won't censor that, whether we make money off of it or not. Because I don't want to support that bullshit. I know Six doesn't, or Recoil, or Oink. So that's the big reason you haven't seen us do any of the uh, interviews or, or anything like that where it has cursing and the laid backness of barracks talk and stuff. So it's it's not just Facebook, it's everything social media pretty much. 
Well, right now they're doing Facebook. It, it, our our reach is throttled. Um, Instagram, I've learned that like if you ever pick up a man on Instagram, that's it for a month. You ain't growing. You're not. You might even go backwards in likes and stuff. So lately, I guess I started instituting that on on social media, on Facebook because we've gone from a reach of 20, 30, 40 million to, you know, whatever. And our likes have come to a crashing halt. So they are definitely throttling shit. Yeah. I, I, it's just, you know, I think it's, I don't want, I'm not quitting. There's too much going on there. We've had 20 vets go through the rehab out in Gilsom. I'd love to keep that going. But if we lose, lose a page, obviously we lose a big voice to help raise funds. I mean, from you guys doing the birthday fundraisers to disgruntled throwing, you know, these events. I mean, no, you know, um, you know, unicorns and rainbows and all that shit's all great. Good ideas are great, but. You know, they don't put food on the table when you're trying to hire employees to help run this shit. So um, we're we're working towards getting some serious funding from whether it be grants or corporate donors, because I don't want to see that go away. Um, it's a unique program for those vets that otherwise would not have a program to go to. Yes, I am well aware that the VA offers programs and I'm well aware that there are lots of others out there. But the type of individuals we take out there, the type that were like me, that traditional programs just didn't work and being surrounded by staff that have been there, done that and stuff, that does work. And it's a great program and I don't want to see it go away. And I don't want to see DV radio go away, you know, um, you know, and all the vets that reach out through the page, we'd still like to help you when we can. Um but who knows? Face half the time our moderators can't see fucking shit on the page. I can't reply to any post right now. I can't like anything on my mobile app. Oh, what the hell's going on there? But let me pull my laptop out of my back pocket. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, so basically if you see us not on social media one day all of a sudden, it wasn't us that decided to do that at all. Yeah. Well it's it's just it's <clears throat> It's gotten pretty out of hand. I mean, we've, we've even lost some moderators because they, they didn't understand like how strict Facebook has gotten and, and why some of the rules that we have in place were in place because it's because we can't lose the page. We really don't want to lose the page. It's a, it's a even inadvertently. I mean, people, it's like they ban you for exactly recall. Exactly. <laughs> you got, we've been really, really careful, but sh- now I just remember what I was trying to, I was going to say two minutes, ago, five minutes ago, a special thank you. You know, when we talk about this censorship and all that, a special thank you and a shout out goes to all those other military themed and veteran themed related pages out there that, uh, you know, help, helped uh, fuel the whole, you know, hate and, and uh, you know, bashing and shit. You know, it's like, but they are doing a good thing. They're helping veterans, right? Yeah. Well, it's like I won't go. I won't. I won't. I won't go on the page. We we have it very rarely. I mean, I've done some targeted when when somebody needs to be addressed when they're out there sewing fucking bullshit. You know, I do that. But the whole jump on the bandwagon with the bro shit and bash another. Even if I don't like them, I do what I did back in the day. I either go to you directly to your face or, you know, I don't say nothing. You know, going on social media is the equivalent of, like, fucking screaming in the playground. <laughs> and these guys. But, hey, good job, though. You know, we're all looking out for each other. Meanwhile, there's bigger fish out there, and they're just, they're all getting, even them, the ones that are being... The ones I'm complaining about are in jeopardy of losing it too. I mean, one team, one fight, right? You know, so many of them are already gone. Oh, and there's a few more going. I've seen them complaining. And then the the smaller pages that get started, you know, they can get away with it because they don't have the reach. But once, as soon as your reach gets out yeah. there, yeah, you, know, once every, you get a little too big. Yeah, and then everything on your page, all the way back to the day you started, it is all going to start getting reported. That's, yeah. that's just how it works. Yeah, that's another thing. No statute of limitations. Rules are changing every day, and they're going back. Hey, this was okay back in 2010, but 
oh my god you better not you can't you can't say that now well that was 20 times that doesn't matter you're banned yep yeah. <laughs> well, remember last time that the page got shut down we had what was it like five days we did nothing but cleanse the page all the way back yeah. Yeah, to the dawn and, of time and now that that's moot now because that was the rules from two years ago yep <laughs> And, so, and, imagine and that, when they say that's it, no more profanity. Like they're gonna make it, you know, you can't have any profanity. That's it. We're done. <laughs> what was the one? The biggest word that, that we had to look for that word everywhere was calling people potatoes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All of a sudden, potato was a horrible fucking thing, and we literally had hundreds of comments and posts. <laughs> yeah. I remember. You know, I remember that though, because it was all of us just fucking rushing, and we were all taking months and years uh individually we would we were, were didn't assign it but we were like hey i've got this month and this year and it's like <laughs> fuck but yeah it's it's gotten stupid isn't the word it's stupid is too good of a word to call it what it is honestly out of hand that's it's beyond out of hand now yeah. And Twitter's not safe either, because hell, I got banned, a seven-day ban on Twitter for something I said to David Hogg like a year ago. <laughs> oh my god, that was hilarious, though. Because he, he messaged me, and he was like, oh, I just got fucking banned because of David fucking Hogg. I thought we got oh, rid no, of him. It, it is so easy. It's so easy. It's not about, like, they're trying to make Facebook safe or, you know, make it enjoyable for everyone, because if they really wanted to do that, it's more about censorship. If they really wanted to do that, then the first thing that would pop up when somebody reports something is, does it bother you enough that you don't want to see this page anymore? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's it. Instead of removing it, unless it's, you know, the same standards for the freedom of speech, you can't incite violence unless you're on the other side. We're not even going to get into that, but you can't, we all fire in a crowded theater, obviously. And you, can't advocate for hurting somebody, blah, 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 and all this. So other than that, if if you if, if, if a joke bothers you, you know, Facebook, you go, this is a veteran page. Uh, this is normal behavior for them. They call people potatoes. Um, by reporting this, you have two choices. You can either, you know, unlike the page and, and we'll never show it to you again on your timeline or, you know, leave it. And that's oh, it. The person's what? permanently gone from the page. One thing I love seeing in the comments is people who think the page is a group. <laughs> you should make this a private group. You should make this a secret group. It's like that's not. I how like pages how work. I'm response. We are responsible for each and every one that's commenting. Yep. Yep. You know, like that's the position of the page, yep. right? Yeah, and, and see that's that's goes right along with the censorship thing. As long as somebody is not being um, outwardly racist or encouraging somebody to injure themselves, we do not stop people from saying whatever the hell they want to say. On the there's page. no way you could, even if you you know, even with well, the ones that you just mentioned. That's true. Uh, Liter literally, the tens of thousands of comments a day, if not hundreds of thousands. Yeah, yeah, and that's it's not. That's it, well, if you one, if you. If you want to go back to election night, we had more than hundreds of thousands of comments. <laughs> we had millions, yeah. And then they shut us down. Yep. But that was a great night. That was still a oh, great night. Oh, my God. We were right. Anyhow, so I guess what I want everybody to take away from this if, is, it, is if, if something happens to the page, then this radio podcast will still be on dvradio.net. You come here on Saturday night. And we will give everybody the latest. And then you can share that to social media sites to let fans and followers know. That's what you can do. I don't know what, like I said, I'm pro it's been a rough, uh, I don't know, since I learned of where we're standing right now with Facebook and other social media platforms, I've not been in a good place. And, I, you know, it's, it, it just sucks to go this many years and... And it's just, it seems for what, for what there's nothing I can do. I mean, I can advocate if I advocate against what I'm talking about on these posts and they, then they're definitely going to slap me with the political shit, just like Milo Crowder, Paul Joseph Watson, they're gone. You know, everybody thought it was okay when they got uh, 
Alex Jones. Look, yeah. I believe even on the veteran pages, the ones that bash us uh, viciously, make up lies, former employees that still are out there, you know, they're they're their little angels, you know, still fucking spread bullshit, you know. Hey, that's their right. I, I, but, you know, you can't have it both ways. I, I, I would totally believe in, in freedom of this freedom of speech and, and this and that. And, uh, just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, well, on the other side of the break, any ideas, shoot me an email, especially how to keep the farm funded. I was going to say on the other side of the break, we'll talk about, <laughs> some other ways that DB radio is going to keep going, even if our social media gets shut down and how the listeners Sounds and everybody good. can uh, participate in that. Um, we will go to break. I know we're cutting the first half hour short. Oh, but... one, one quick thing. One yep. quick thing. Real, just a shout out to Chappie of Disgruntled Bats. I was in a phone call and I let him know of the situation and I want to thank him for, for offering any help. If the, unfortunate happens and i really appreciate that chappy you know i was using the page to help the business continue you know to share ads and stuff or anything just to help keep those homeless vets in a place uh safe and uh, this that um thank you so we'll go to break we'll come back on the other side of the break we'll talk about why db6 is down at my house because we have an upcoming event next saturday in virginia and we have a lot of other information to get out. You are listening to the Barracks Talk right here on dvradio.net. DV Radio. And the next episode of Media Litter Sandwich. Now, if they, now if it was going to premiere in Hell, Michigan, that would be a good headline. Why don't we have a movie theater in Hell, Michigan? That way we have a movie theater in Hell. Every time we play something like, you know, I'll never watch that movie. Not in Hell I'm going to watch that movie. Oh, yeah? Guess what movie theater we're going to go to? If I was to build a movie theater, I want to build a movie theater in hell, Michigan. It'll be a cold day in hell when I sit down and watch a prequel to Grease. What's DV Radio? DV Radio is for you, the veteran, active duty service member, caregiver, and civilian supporter of the military. DVRadio.net is the online veteran network made for and by veterans. From original shows to syndication, you can find it here on DVRadio.net. In an effort to continue our mission and make better quality shows for each and every one of you, visit our Patreon at Patreon.com forward slash DVRadio. Whether you can only pledge $1 per month or that entire million dollar inheritance, your uncle left you there's a tier with rewards waiting for you so why not keep dv radio running and get rewarded at the same time head to patreon.com forward slash dv radio now that's patreon.com forward slash dv radio dv radio You're listening to WDVR, only on DDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDD
to make a, a little bit of extra money to help keep things going. And that's exactly what that is over at, uh, over at, um, Patreon right now with DV Radio. You have tiers ranging from a dollar all the way up to uh, a couple hundred dollars. The ones that's in the couple hundred dollars are advertisement spots for veteran owned companies and, uh, organizations that want to advertise here on dvradio.net. And I have no problem with that at all, but, we do offer some stuff that most people don't, and it's probably the cheapest you're going to find anywhere. Trust me, I, I, I've <laughs> done a lot of research. I know it's the cheapest. Um, that being said, you can pledge one dollar and pretty much get a ton of stuff. Absolutely, uh, no holds barred there on Patreon uh, access to. I should say uh, we have five and, and ten and, and stuff like that. What we're thinking about implementing uh, over the next couple of weeks, though, uh, we're Looking at a music therapy hour here on DV Radio Network. Um, what is music therapy? Uh, music therapy is basically a healthcare service that consists of using music uh, therapeutically to address your physical, psychological, cognitive, and uh, social functions for anyone. Um, it's been proven that music is a therapeutic tool. Um, we don't know yet when we're going to launch this. Stay tuned to DV Radio. Dot net. Um, try to watch us on social media and stuff like that. But we're going to offer that here on DV Radio. And the reason I'm bringing it up while I'm talking about Patreon is because I want to give those that are, even even if it's just a dollar, if you are a Patreon and you're given on Patreon, your song request will come prioritized before everybody else. Uh, whether it's an hour long music therapy or two hours long those songs that you on Patreon have requested will come first. And there will be a, a, a post each week for all of those that are a member of Patreon. And you'll get to put in your song request. And if we're able to play them due to our music licensing, we will play them. If we're not, we'll let you know during the show, stuff like that. Um, so if you want to be prioritized over everybody else, just give a dollar. That's it. Uh, I hate asking for money, and <laughs> everybody here knows I hate asking for money. But what we do is not free by any means whatsoever, and the only way we can grow and make things better for you and get better shows and more shows is if we pay out a little bit of money, and we can't make money without you know spending money. Uh, you guys want merchandise? We have to spend money. So become a Patreon. Give a dollar. That's all you have to do. If you want to do anything else in the tier blocks, please have at it. There will be an extra tier for uh, those that want to be heavily involved in the uh, music uh, therapy, um, but we're still working out a few details for that. Recoil, someone mentioned in um, the chat on dvradio.net, while we don't push people completely over to uh, dvbarracks.com, the DV forum from Facebook, and shut basically Facebook down from people posting to it and all. Do you want to uh, go in depth on why we've not done that yet? Well, I mean, we do try to steer people over to the forum, um, but we're really hoping that word of mouth from vet to vet would would keep people moving towards the forum because we don't want to we don't want to pimp it too much because then we end up with a bunch of fakes and douchebags coming in there, uh, and it's hard enough to screen everybody that's coming in now. So we're really trying to keep the forum by us and for us. Okay, and and the other part of that is why don't we shut down Facebook pages uh, like DV and DV Radio from our uh, followers and, and people that like the page from posting it. It's just admins and moderators. Well, on the Facebook end of the spectrum, we actually keep everything open for quite the opposite, uh, to, to reach as many people as possible. Um, if we make them closed groups or secret groups, then, uh, you know, we can't expand our following. So I, I just want everybody to understand it's listening. We are a veteran page but whether you're a caregiver or civilian or anybody like that we will help you is that right absolutely you know, especially caregivers right um, you know, caregivers and, and there's you know we always talk about and joke about and we have the running joke about dependas and depend upon us and all that bullshit but uh, you know a military spouse is a whole lot different um than, than what everybody calls you know the proverbial dependa uh, a military spouse is, is you know, your number one support structure. And we're here to back them up as much as we are the veterans themselves. Most definitely. Um, speaking of caregivers, 
for those of you that are listening, if you're a caregiver, whether you're a civilian, uh, the spouse of a veteran, or anything like that, if you're a caregiver to a veteran and or, and or a caregiver to a civilian, email me at info at dvradio.net. Uh, myself and Recoil have talked about this in depth uh, a few times. We want to do a roundtable discussion centered around caregivers. Uh, if it wasn't for caregivers, a lot of us would not be able to do what we do. Uh, probably, I hate to say it, would not be here uh, because of our caregivers. But if you're a caregiver, know of a caregiver, like, again, whether it's a spouse, a civilian, uh, you're the caregiver of a civilian or a veteran, let us know. Email me at info at dvradio.net. Introduce yourself. Tell me what you do. A little bit about about your background. Um, we'll we'll uh, email you back. We'll we'll talk about some stuff, and we'll go from there. But we really really want to do a roundtable discussions, whether it's an hour long or, or six hours long, on caregivers. Like I said, civilian and uh, uh, veteran. So info at dvradio.net. So six, you're down here at my house. And there's a reason for that. Unmute. Yeah. That or he's, he's probably talking about. Going. Yeah. Um. Well, his mama oh, makes I, good food. <laughs> <laughs> my mama makes the best. Um. I've not been able to really eat my mom's cooking because I have no teeth. Um. <laughs> but, grind it up and suck it through a straw. <laughs> fucking recoil one night. They ordered pizza, and I have to pretty much swallow shit now. He's like, why don't you just blend it up? I know I would. I was like, motherfucker, go fuck yourself. Like, no, <laughs> I am not drinking a milkshake pizza. Hell to the no. Um, definitely, definitely would and will. <laughs> would and will. Let me break your jaw and we'll do it a little bit sooner than you <laughs> this Um, But no, uh, he's down here at my house because he's got to go back up to Herndon, Virginia uh, and be there on May 26th. This event at Jimmy's Old Town Tavern. That's the Jimmy's 22nd Annual Anniversary Bash and Bike Run. Uh, proceeds from sales and, and other stuff will go to the DV Farm. They're going to have ribs, uh, grilled chicken, burgers, cheeseburgers, uh, J-O-T-T dog, whatever that is. I don't know. Um, crawfish, lobster, all kinds of stuff. Um, again, that's uh, starting at 8 a.m. at Jimmy's Old Town Tavern in Herndon, Virginia. I think it's just outside of uh, Washington, D.C., D.C., somewhere like that. Um, I've not been up there. That's out of my Cabbage Patch area. So um, <laughs> if you don't know, we call them Cabbage Heads in Virginia. Um, so <laughs> uh, I was hoping he would talk about that, but I guess he's not going to. Okay, anyway, but it is to help benefit the DV Farm. I believe they're going to have uh, some type of uh, bike rally. They have band lineups and, and stuff like that. So check that out. I am about to drop the, um, what do you call it? What's that thing? The URL drop in, in, in dvradio.net's chat. It says link now. Our chat box done an upgrade, and I, I can't fix it. Uh, six, you're going to Jimmy's uh, Old Town Tavern uh, next week. You want to talk about that? I've talked a little bit about it, but do you want to do any say Yeah, I'm going to be in Herndon, Virginia. Listen up, you guys. Jimmy's Old Town Tavern in Herndon, Virginia. This thing has been going on for 22 years. I don't think anything I say is is, is going to help. It's just got a massive following. So if you never, if you're in that area, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of people, good people, so it's not the usual crowd. Go there. I'll be there. I'm going to thank these people. They're donating proceeds to the DV Farm Homeless Vets. That's why I wasn't back right after the break. Um, but I had um, um, basically homeless vets I had to deal with right now. So, But I'm all caught up. Um, and Google is just a little bit more delayed because I had to give her work, too. <laughs> um uh, another thing I just noticed on this uh, event page for Jimmy's uh, Old Town Tavern is it says the Reckoning MC is assisting uh, this bike ride that they've got. So thank you, Reckoning MC, for uh, assisting in that and bringing this all together. Um, so, yeah, I, I wish I could go up there with you uh, maybe one of these years. Uh, and speaking oh, of yes. people, she's ready. And I'm down here now to see, to witness the miracle of the VA. You want to talk about that a little bit? Our buddy Bonerwood is finally 
finally going to have a place, a room. The thing's are not a bad room, too. It's not the VA building it, the VA funding it. Thank God they're not building it. Right. You might <laughs> but, as well uh, say they you did. will not be. You know, I thought it was bad when I was homeless in his front yard. Imagine having a homeless vet live on your couch for fucking 10 years or whatever years it was since he yeah. got home from the military. Yeah. You know? Pretty much. Yeah. I'm happy for you. I'm glad that you have this finally happening after all the years and red tape and the VA pulling it out, pulling it back again, and then saying you can do it, then pulling it back again. Yeah, um, and and I think you four are the ones that, other than my personal and close friends and family, are the only ones that actually know what I've been through just to get to where we're at now. <laughs> I'll tell you, Bo is blessed and lucky to have the family that he has down here. He's got a great support system, and I know not everybody has that, but uh, his family is all right. And uh, it just sucks that for those vets that are out there trying to do, you know disabled vets that are trying to, to do the things they need to do and get the VA to help them. They don't have that. And they're trying to do it all on their own. You know, it's just, it's sad, but I'm happy for you, Bo. I'll be down there tomorrow. I'll be, well, I'm here now. <laughs> I was about to say <laughs> the great thing about visiting Bo. I love, it's not the people, it's the dogs. Oh my God. You want to tell them about Yogi down near ripping your jeans off this morning? Yeah. So. <laughs> or this no, evening, I, 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 right. I should say. I keep it interesting. Um, <laughs> so, oh my God, look at all these emails. Anyhow, Google will be here in a second. Um, what else is going on? I haven't. I don't watch TV, the news, so I don't know the latest on. Uh, the latest. I, uh, if I talk about this, I know Google then won't talk about it, and I don't know if she's gonna talk about it. But now AOC is saying, you know, I was just joking about the world was going to end in 12 years. God, can't you guys take a joke? Well, her whole career is a joke. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting ready to say she's got the best comedic stand up ever. Yeah. I'm <laughs> like, yeah. Well, your supporters. What about all those little kids that went to Diane, Fe Diane Feinstein's office, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Six. I'm sorry, but Google's like, I'm here. I'm trying to do the work he told me to do. <laughs> no, I know. I'm not. I'm not yelling at. No, home. no, no. <laughs> it, it, it was just funny. It was just. And I'd like to know how Boner is uh -oh. more up to date on where my wife is at, <laughs> and what's going on. It's, it's like, well, no. see, see, that's where I had to catch twenty two. It was one of those. It's okay, you don't have to tell six moments, but I had to tell six that Google's not going to be on till late because we have to sort of plan for that on how we're going to introduce and talk and shit like that. So I know he's going to ask, and I, I'm not, I can't lie to the man. I can't say, I don't know. I, can't. Oh, man. I don't lie. That's one thing I don't do. I don't fucking lie. <laughs> so... Then he goes, well, how do you know? And I'm like, oh, God, here we go. I got two people mad at me now. That's what's going to happen. Say is she posted it to social media. But she didn't post it to social media. It was a private <laughs> fucking message. could have lied. I don't fucking lie. <laughs> lie! Oh, talking about my, uh, my room. Everybody's been asking, you know, are we going to get updates and pictures and video and shit? We are going to do that. The caveat to that is it's going to be on Patreon only. Um, the reason being is because, one, I don't like to share my entire life on social media. What's the caveat? Is that the <sighs> thing you put on your head? Oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus fucking... I, I, don't, I don't like to give out too much on, on my personal life in social media land. But the other reason is... A big word. Oh it's God. like an ascot worn by Cow Scouts. Oh my god. What's an ascot? Is that something you shove up your bum? <laughs> yeah. exactly speaking of it. speaking of listen, I got a couple things. One, Bo can't do nothing about it because he's stuck on the couch, but I'm gonna go in where they're doing the construction and draw penises all on the inside of the before they put the sheet rock up. So if they ever remodel that replace, you know, twenty, thirty years, you know, when Bo's like thirty or forty. 
Um, <laughs> find my old words of wisdom in there, little penises and stuff. Um, and, and the other, did anybody see the video I did? They did the shocking sale, all the little videos I did before the shocking sale or during the shocking sale where I blew the chicken up. No. I don't. I, I didn't see any of those videos, but I was getting notifications while I was trying to edit a fucking show all fucking day, every five <laughs> minutes. Bling. I this you said show you better. Don't it's lie. live. I don't lie. That's the caveat <laughs> to you. Oh my God, you're such an ascot. You know what? You're a dick tube. That's what you are. You're a dick tube. Dick tube. Well, dick at tube. least I don't have. At least you're. Well, no. Uh, <laughs> Oh, shut up. <laughs> um, but what I was trying to say... What I was trying to say before I was rudely interrupted <laughs> about my room <laughs> is that they will be available on Patreon. I don't want to share it all to social media because, like I said, I don't like doing that. So if you want to see pictures and videos and updates, go give a dollar a month and you can see the you know, updates of my room. And a, another thing about Patreon I, I didn't mention is if you come up on the month and you can't do the $55 tier and you want to do the $25 tier, you can change it. If there's a month that you can't pay at all, that's fine. I understand. We understand. We get it. Everybody has financial responsibilities, and you should be taking care of yourself and your family first. So don't think we're going to be all butthurt because you couldn't do it one month, but you could do it the next month. We completely understand. And you got to hurry because the world's going to end in 12 years. <laughs> I was just joking. Can't people take a joke? Oh, my God. I really got to give a shout-out to Mo <laughs> for this time making my welcome even better with a pack of potty outside my camper. You're Thank welcome. You. Yep, that took all of uh, my life savings, so you're welcome for that. Um, um, oh, uh, talk to Chappie from Disgruntled. Tentatively, or it's pretty much, no, not tentatively, that's the caveat. The big event by Disgruntled Vets will be on the 31st of August in Colorado, so I will be out there for that, just to let you know. Uh, other than that, we have the motorcycle run, possibly a hole-in-one contest in August. Fourth of July event at the farm. What else? A lot Does, going on. Uh, I got a question uh, from one of our chat members. Does the hole in one include KY Jelly? Uh, you're gonna have to go to Bo's um, Patreon account and unlock <laughs> that. Okay. Okay. Just, just <laughs> wanting to make sure. We'll even throw in a free container of ass cream. Yes, ass cream. Um, I thought you said it would be Ascot. <laughs> You said Isn't ascot. Isn't that like a grape jelly? <laughs> grape jelly is good. Don't put grape jelly down. And it is confirmed. I will not be going to Alaska anytime soon. It's too expensive. <laughs> well, I mean, you can take out a couple loans, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of taking out loans, we went to DQ for the first time. The last time I got my uh, teeth taken out to get a milkshake, it was three, almost three and a half dollars for one Kid size milkshake. Well, you do qualify because you're not that tall, but I'm five eight. You dickwad. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're five eight anymore, Bo. Okay. Okay. You keep telling yourself that. Every big time man. I go in and talk to you, you're like at my navel. I can't <laughs> imagine why. At, at least I look so. good. At least I look good in a loincloth. <laughs> or no loincloth. <laughs> oh my god. Hey! I just got muted too, and now he wants to goddamn bark. <laughs> Puppy! Oh, you got headphones on. At least I won't blind myself tonight when I go to bed. <laughs> everybody, was, everybody was hoping you stepped on a thumbtack that night, too. <laughs> night. Well, let me just. Can I have a couple minutes to get her up to date on what's going on? All right. Okay, you have so, two minutes, and know, go. So the generators, the thing that Andy, the farm manager, built is basically an insulated noise suppressor, and it makes the generator overheat. So 
I tried something different. I bought some wood. That made the generator overheat. So then I had to get, uh, what else? You know what? I don't even, I'm done. I'm done. I miss you. I love you. And yeah, I'll bye. Myself, no. I don't like it. Well, since Google made her fashionably late appearance. That's just for you, Google. <laughs> so, how's your day been there, Google? Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, it's been all right. God okay. Damn, my staplers out of staples, and I don't have a thumb on my right hand. I don't like it. So you, well, I heard you had to put a horse down today. No, we didn't have, a, have to put a horse down. Oh my god! Oh, you lied. I did not <gasps> say that, you dick no. bag. He wasn't feeling good, so I didn't want to call the vet out. So I'm like, I'll just fucking walk him for four hours. It wasn't that long, actually, but he should be fine. I'll get a call if he's not. And then I'll have to get up in the middle of the night and drive an hour out there. Well, Google, since your day wasn't that great, how was your week? I got my fancy schmancy fucking little brace in the mail. And? And I don't have a thumb on my right hand. It says the brace, the the thingy, it's one, the box says made for life. And I'm like... <laughs> This is not that's, helpful. That's the VA then, for you. I was just saying, I talk to the VA. <laughs> yeah, right. And then on the on the little insert, it says, um, whatever, with abducted thumb. I'm like, who the fuck stole my thumb? Well, oh my God. is it okay to talk about Frankenstein's monster becoming Google? Uh-oh. Do you remember... What was it, yesterday or the day before you said something about something about you couldn't use both of them at the same time? Oh, so yesterday, (laughs) fucking, to top it all off, yesterday my left hand, well, my left wrist was bugging the shit out of me, like the beginning stages of Carpal Tunnel. I'm like, great, now I'm going to have to fucking dig out my goddamn brace for my left hand. I'm like, I'm not going to wear two braces at the same time, but I guess I'll have to if I can't use either of them. As as soon as I read that, (laughs) the first thing that came to mind was Frankenstein's monster. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I can see Google trying to move her arms, and all she can do is move her body, and her arms are staying stiff. Right? She's like, 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 She's like trying to move her body to slap down on, on the fucking keyboard and shit. <laughs> yeah, I was less than excited. Oh my god. The good thing is, we have a sense of humor. <laughs> yep. Like my psychologist, who told me that she could make the paper say whatever she wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking died Fuck laughing ball. that day. You suck. You got fucking songs stuck in there. <laughs> oh my god. Welcome to my world. And pots and pans. <laughs> so, uh, Oink, how was your week? Uh, it was kind of boring. Back to work on day shift, so, you know, nothing too exciting. So, you came back to the living? Good. Yeah, back to the living, doing the normal, you know, wake up at oh four o'clock in the morning and get home about 5 o'clock, so, you know. <laughs> Right. Or 1700. Uh, <laughs> Recoil, how was your week? Recoil, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I was at the shop and it was, I worked a lot. I, I have a feeling Recoil had to uh, go visit the Porcelain King. I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> My turn. No, you, you, sp- <laughs> you spoke God. over recoil. He just wants to know. So what were you trying to say, doctor, as it says on Zoom chat for your name? 
What? Your your initials for your little image on Zoom for me is Doctor D R. Mine? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. My fucking mic quit working for some reason. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have to fix that shit. We. Uh, that's another reason to go become a Patreon to to help us get fucking equipment and software that actually fucking works because we're using Goodwill hand me downs basically at this point in time. <laughs> Even Goodwill won't sell this shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my god. So how was your lovely week there, Recoil? Um, shorter than the last two by about ten hours. Well, that's a lot <laughs> better than what I was expecting. <laughs> right. I know you were busy last week, and this week I didn't think you were going to stop there, honestly. Nah, well, you know... I brought in a shitload of work, but then I didn't have the people to do it, obviously. So then I was basically had to do a lot of the work myself while trying to hire people. I got you. So. Now, pertaining to your to to the welding company, I did hear on the news something about tariffs for Canada and Mexico on steel. Is that hurting or helping you guys at all? It's not really hurting us. You know, it just gets passed on to the to the customer, and really, actually, steel prices are down. Well, that's good because I know there for so a while they were expensive, weren't they? Yeah, and it's not really what I expected. I actually expected the steel prices to to go up, um, but they haven't. They've they've actually gone down, so that's pretty awesome. Well, I loved the other day when uh, what was it? Japan was like, we're going to raise tariffs by twenty five percent, and the Dow Jones went down by like five hundred points, and then the Next three days, it hit like 1,500 record high points, and I was like, ha! And everybody was, again, afraid that we were going to fucking crash the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Don't threaten, us, don't threaten us with a good time. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, no, seriously, we need to become a production nation again anyway. We do. We really do. Um, ma- My mom and I were talking about that. You know, that's... If, what we was had, it? if we had actual production and manufacturing jobs, like a lot of them, then people wouldn't be crybabying for fucking fifteen dollars an hour to flip burgers. Right? There'd actually, <laughs> there'd actually be jobs that pay fifteen dollars an hour for them to go to. Yeah. Well, I mean, places like uh, your 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 hosiery mills and all those have shut down. I mean, my mom worked at one for for fucking ever, and then she went on to another one, and all of them went overseas because thank you, Clinton. Um, and I mean, it's these career jobs aren't really career there, jobs anymore. There are still some around, like, uh, not too far from us, down in York, Pennsylvania, is uh, one of the Harley-Davidson plants. Yeah. Where they build Harleys. Um, you know, and that's that's a cool manufacturing gig. But uh, we definitely need more of it. And, and a lot of it just comes down to freaking cost. You know, I mean, uh, people can't afford american labor unfortunately that's the reality i mean when you go to walmart you're not seeing too much made in usa there yeah well speaking of walmart i just seen a, a thing about our local walmart higher end starting out at 11 dollars an hour there's a huge problem with that though uh the people that are currently working there get no holidays off whatsoever they cannot get no overtime whatsoever and they cannot get a raise for the next three years so thank you, millennials and dickwads that complained you needed eleven and fifteen dollars an hour for the rest of your fucking life. Go. Fuck hey, yourself. you know, I'm glad you brought that up because there's something like people don't realize <laughs> about the institute needs you know, Mando uh, fifteen dollars an hour or whatever wages. When they did that, all the little jobs out there that old people used to take and little kids or whatever, but because of all the stupid laws. You know, these people, like there are people out there that are retired that don't need full, you know, don't care about how much they get. And it's a perfect side job. Remember the ticket guy at the movie theater? Yep. Ain't nobody paying him $15 an hour. Oh, come Um, on now. Now, Aggers at the commissary, $15 an hour. Now, when you go into McDonald's, they have kiosks instead of people. Yeah. Good job. You've been replaced with a giant iPhone. <laughs> God. Oh. Here I'm trying to cough and laugh at the same time. That was not a good combination. <laughs> it's just crazy what they're doing. 
My mom's going to sleep, everybody. Good night. Love you. Bye, Mama. Bye, Mama. Yay, I was here in time to say good night. Google was happy she was here in time to say good night. <laughs> she went, good night. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, when you go to Walmart, there's like 900 people trying to check out and three registers open, but there's oh. like a dozen of the fucking self-checkouts. That's what I always do. <laughs> right. I always go to the self-checkout. I'm, like, so I'm, not, I'm not afraid to bag my own shit. I mean, you know, I, I do like the non-interaction thing, but at the same time, that's hurting a lot of people that do actually need these jobs that can't get a job elsewhere, you know? Yeah. And well, maybe they shouldn't have so many. Well, when it's cheaper than paying an employee $15 a fucking hour, I'd take it too. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, at least I know my ant poison and chocolate bar aren't going to end up in the same fucking bag. <laughs> <laughs> or, or when you got like bread and they put the biggest shit on top of it, go fuck yourself. I don't know where you guys learned to fucking bag groceries, but you need to go back to bagging school, all right? Tea bagging school, more like. Fucking assholes. Oh, <laughs> right. I didn't think about that. <laughs> oh my god. So today I'm 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 in a a uh, Crohn's group on Facebook, and they post some really out there stuff. You guys have seen some of the stuff they post. Well, a woman asked in this group suggestions on what to use to eliminate bathroom odor at work. And it was so hard for me not to comment, corks work amazingly, because, because it's a support group, and I know they would kick me out in a fucking heartbeat, but I, I was like, I want to comment, corks work amazingly so fucking bad. Like, I had it typed out and everything, and I was like, I can't, I can't hit enter, like, as bad as I want to right now. Normally, I'd say have at it, but I can't. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Buy me a drink. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how much how much would you guys pay for a good toothbrush? Honestly. What? A, a decent vibrating toothbrush with a spinning head. Yes. <laughs> yes. Then you know where I'm Listen, going with this. I brush what whatever's in my travel bag that Google puts in there. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying, if you had money to spend on an electric toothbrush, how much would you spend? I'd probably get a new generator. All right, I don't know. <laughs> Thirty bucks. How much their recoil? Thirty bucks. <laughs> what about you, Oink? Well, at the Alaska prices, that's probably about fifty. So, <laughs> what about you, Google? Uh. Well, so, it depends. It's an electric toothbrush. Electric toothbrush. I still use a manual. Right, but but I would need... Oh, my God. <laughs> well... <laughs> In general, if you were to buy a fucking electric toothbrush, Google... Yeah, I would... but I would be very specific on what I needed ah, to buy. Specific. She said um, fucking West Coast. <laughs> so, one of them um, the one that I would get... <laughs> Would be like a hundred forty bucks Jesus because that's Christ. what I kind of need. Well, that's fucking outrageous! I, Jesus Christ! I'm I know. Not, anyway, that's not what I want to be spending, but any, does anyway, that, does, that thing, does that thing take a thirty round magazine clip? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, if I still had I'm teeth, like, I'm gonna let you turn it on. <laughs> if, if I still had teeth, I would I would be in the vicinity of recoil and oil, no more than. Forty dollars, no less than thirty. But there's this toothbrush out there. I don't want to give their name out because they're not fucking sponsoring us. Um, <laughs> but their fucking toothbrush is two hundred and thirty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. Okay, who the fuck spends that much on a goddamn toothbrush? Well, I'll just tell you and this. You wait, 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 wait. Listen, listen. It features 40,000 brush strokes per minute, compared to the 300 strokes per minute you had with your old manual toothbrush. That's over 100 times powerful than manual brushing alone. Then 300, it, 300 strokes per minute. Are we talking toothbrushes still? Right? <laughs> well, then, then they say it has four brushing modes, 
Um, it's equipped uh, with clean, soft, whitening, and massage because, you know, you want your gums to be really massaged after that spa treatment. Um, you have a brushing timer for you little kids out there that still don't know that two minutes is probably the optimal time. Um, <laughs> and then it has an extra long battery life for those people that are single. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> Google. Um, <laughs> so far, I've heard massage and 300 strokes per minute. Well, the only thing that I found that was Asian by chance. The only thing I found cool about this is it comes with three heads. That's not penises, and then it comes with its own. <laughs> it comes. It comes with its own cleaner which is UV light, you stick the heads, not penises, inside this UV cleaner, and it the UV light cleans them because UV light has been proven to kill 99.9% .9 of all bacteria and shit. But that's the only thing. And even then, I can go out and buy a fucking UV light for 30 bucks if I wanted to do that. <laughs> like, I'm... Oh, man. In reality, if I wanted this shit right here, I could spend sixty bucks and make my own. <laughs> right? Used to have we used to do bong hits and have uh, felt posters under UV lights when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just I imagining mean, uh... <laughs> recoil as a kid <laughs> uh, <laughs> with a I mean, bong. The army. I've never tried marijuana. <laughs> According to the army, I never had a knee injury. <laughs> hey, real quick. I was about to say they know we all fucking lie in the application about using drugs. My muted. To joining. I'm muted. You're not muted, six. We hear you. You're an ass. I just wanted to ask Google if she went to the barn today. Did she wear her boots? No. Uh, then never mind. Now she's going to go investigate. <laughs> just trying to picture her in her really tall leather boots. Well, at first I thought he said boots. No, not those boots. He saves up for when I'm home. Oh. <laughs> the I hooker know boots. I'm talking about my muck boots. The ones on the stairs. The one you wear to the barn. Those yeah. are, well, I wear other ones. Oh, <laughs> never mind. I, I was going to say, the ones I wore to the barn on Wednesday were, were on my feet when you left the house and left me all these sticky notes. Yeah. I found one in the freezer today. So they're still popping up. <laughs> yes. So before I left everybody, I to show my what's that word? Affection or how much I probably would miss her when I was gone. I left sticky notes in weird places. Your undying like, love and affection. I purposely left the toilet seat up so that she'd have to put it down. There was a note um, in her tampon box. Oh, my God. Six. We're getting too personal. Hopefully, you're, uh, hopefully your latest post doesn't get you in trouble. Oh, yeah. Mark, um, Mark's safe from Alyssa Milano's sex strike. Yeah. I, just put that out there. I saw it. I'm like, yeah, okay. So we're going to post an extra meme today. <laughs> <laughs> um so <laughs> fucking hell i'm looking at i'm sure we're gonna get a big call or complaint monday somebody posted a photo of somebody's vehicle that they put a parking card on but not one card they put the whole pack on <laughs> <laughs> Like 50 cards. That's uh, crazy. So we'll be getting a phone call. That's my fault. Not too long Where ago. We should do background checks for the barking cards. Not too long ago. Barking cards? <laughs> not too what long ago. Someone. Someone. someone cards. <laughs> not too long ago, someone <laughs> actually posted a picture to the page. It's been a couple years ago, now that I think about it. But someone had a convertible and they left their top down and they'd done the same thing except they threw them inside the car. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd say that because it was beautiful. I was like, that right there is the dickest move I've ever seen, but it's fucking hilarious. Next, next to shitting moved. on the driver's seat. Uh, just I so everybody fun. knows, Nevermore just said, fuck you, Bo, baby shark. Um, <laughs> I gotta go top the generator off. 
Have so fun. hello, he- hello, Nevermore, and you're welcome. You're welcome, Nevermore. We love you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Baby. Nevermore. Holy um, shit. I have a question. I have an answer. Answers are five dollars. Correct answers are ten. <laughs> 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 Since when did we re- start referring to plants and flowers as boys or girls? And how do we what? know if it's male or female? Some plants you can actually tell by the pistil or stamen. Oh, now I know what you're talking about. <laughs> At first I thought she meant something completely different. <laughs> God, bro. I got so fucking lost. Uh, yes, recoil is right. You can I, actually... I want to know. Wh- I want to know why it's perfectly acceptable for the birds and the beasts to rape the flowers. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually part of where the first DNA research comes from. Google is flowers and being able to tell if they were fe- uh, male or female. All right. Thank you, flowers, well, for allowing us DNA to research themselves if they're going to refer to a flower as a boy or girl don't put this boy or girl i don't know which bloomed today i mean all these extra sexes are definitely going to throw the whole spanish language way off track (laughs) (laughs) i'm sorry that's a masculine or feminine word (laughs) we really need the metrosexual word You know, Merriam-Webster Dictionary just added 600 new words this year to the dictionary. And my question is, does every language in the entire world add words to their fucking language every fucking year, like the English language? What words did they add? It was 600, Google. You want me to name them all? What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) That was stupid, and and not all of them were words. Ninety percent of them were fucking terms, like two word terms, not one fucking word. It was terms, and I'm like, uh, what? No, that's that's a sentence in some now fucking respect. Now finish out the show. Bo is gonna list all six hundred of them. <laughs> but I'm on their website. It says more than six hundred forty new words from bioabsorbable to bottle episode. See, bottle episode is not one fucking word. What the fuck? Oh, the very first word that's listed is snowflake. Oh my god. <laughs> How is that a new word? I know. Now used to mean both someone regarded or treated well, as unique or special and someone who is overly sensitive. Well, it's oh, like. Purple is also a new word, apparently. It, so is. Tailwind and headwind. It's like not too long ago, someone was like, come on, spill the tea. And I was like, spill the what? And they were like, spill the tea. I was like, I have no clue what you're talking about. (laughs) Then they go on to tell me, it's been around for years. And I was like, apparently not. I don't know what the fuck it is. Come to find out, it's, you know, tell me the gossip, spill the beans. And I've done done a little origin research. It comes (laughs) from the 90s with the LGBT community, but mostly gay men saying spill the tea and i was like you expect me a heterosexual male to know what the fuck spill the tea means like really like <laughs> and you all know exactly who i'm talking about it's a certain person on the west coast and i was like you know i'm not that way you know for a fact i'm not that way you said it yourself that I'm not that way because you asked me about a drink that I had no fucking clue of, and you were proud. You were proud I didn't know what that was. <laughs> well, well, Bo, since we're talking about drinks, um, new co- one of the new compound terms is go cup. Go, a go plastic cup. or paper cup used especially for taking a beverage off the premises of a bar, restaurant, etc. Okay, is that hyphenated or a space? Yes. Or- Okay. Go hyphen cup. So well, they took the word. They took the word two out of it to go cup. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, it, like Recoil said, it used to be to go hyphenated cup. <laughs> <laughs> and that's well, what kills me about dollar. words being added to the dictionary. <laughs> right, so now, now, doggy bag is going to have a new term. <laughs> <laughs> I superman that hole in my doggy bag. Have you ever, have you, okay, Bo and 
um, and Oink, you guys play a lot of games. Like so do you, Google. Don't deny that. <laughs> but I don't play with other people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard the term garbage time? Maybe during it's garbage the, pail trading card time. <laughs> it's the final moments or minutes of a game in which one side has an unsurmountable lead. Oh, that's got to be some fucking kid shit on Fortnite. I mean, it has uh, to be. I've never heard of that. Have you, Link? I, I've never heard of it. I, I mean, I've been playing since the early 90s, and I've never heard that term. But, what about um, you, DB6? Yeah, I was going to say, I got to go. I've got garbage time to go do. <laughs> I didn't mean to You're spill the tea. The trash? But, yeah, I topped off. Uh, I rehydrated the generator. So You rehydrated the generator? Yes, not to be too Pacific, you know. All right. All right. <laughs> Gee, show me a Coke. <laughs> I'll see you okay. in the morning. All right. Okay. The term, the term Good bottle evening. episode comes is is a new word from oh. entertainment. It means an an inexpensively produced episode of a television series that is typically confined to one setting. Um, I I think you need to reiterate what garbage time is. Nogs missed that part. He was watching my cousin Vinny. Uh, garbage time means the final moments or minutes of a game in which one side has an unsurmountable lead. It's the final countdown. <laughs> um, new words from science and medicine include bioabsorbable, which is which just means capable of being absorbed by living tissue. Um, okay. Well, let's stop there because that's going to overload my brain and go to brain. Here's the best one. Here's the best one. There's two actually: top surgery and bottom surgery. It's a type of gender confirmation surgery. Okay, well, unless they're one of the ones that's getting a fish as a vagina, uh, and we'll talk about that later, I don't want to know about it. Um, you're listening to Barrett's Talk here on DVRadio.net. We're going to come back with junk that's in the news with Google since she made it here on the show. Uh, stay tuned. Let's get it on. We got some fresh beef for you. The music. Yo! You're listening to WDVR on DVRadio.net. By veterans, for veterans. Simply made for you. My name is David Libby. This business, you have to work your ass off for nothing, most of the time. And you have to want to do it. Welcome to Contraband. Our guest is Chris Brother Latham, Jeff Vicente, Johnny Cornwall. He's the band of Sosra, and I get to cackle on there every now and then. Well, the guy that owns the Chinese food place, his name is Art. (laughs) (laughs) DB Radio. You're listening to Barrett's Talk on DBRadio.net. We're back on the air. DV Radio. You big dummy. And now it's time to find out what stupid junk is in the news. So, um. I know I don't watch the cartoon Arthur because kids watch the cartoon. Does anyone have a kid who watches the cartoon Arthur? No, but that used to be a really cool cartoon show back in the day. Back back in the days. Um, Well, Mr. Ratburn in the season premiere has married a man. Oh, my God. I know there is uproar from one side and there is wonder from the other side. And it's like, come on, really, really like who gives a shit? They have to make this big giant deal about it. And, oh my God. 
was like, well, what's funny you... is all these cartoons try to adapt to the generation, and they don't realize that it hurts more than it helps. I know. It's just, I think, I mean, I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of, I, I mean, I wouldn't care either way, whatever, but it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, some people say, um, like one person on Twitter said, now that Mr. Ratburn is gay, I can finally die. Um, I don't know if that's good or not. Someone else said, wow, after all these years, congratulations, Mr. Ratburn. I'm like, oh, my God. Um, and then you have the comments like, Mr. Ratburn being gay is my Game of Thrones finale. Um, thanks for coming out. It's like, <laughs> there's just, it's like everyone went nuts. And others are saying pretty much what. But Bo said, you know, just because you're trying to be like the times, the show has been around forever, and it's not helping you any. Well, it's like the rumor that Cookie Monster was going to become vegetarian. That was an actual thing that Sesame Street had actually thought about doing. And did you see the uproar about that? No, <laughs> that was... I completely missed that. I assumed that he was a vegetarian because he only eats cookies. Well, cookies aren't necessarily vegetarian but um yeah he back... doesn't he anytime you see him he's eating chocolate chip cookies yeah well you know cookies have eggs in them usually okay vegetarians still eat eggs it's vegans Egg... that do not whatever whatever <laughs> I, I, I there's a that difference. no that's that's total bullshit I can't no, stand it's that. not. It didn't. God. It used to be the same, and then they were like, "Oh, vegans are different from vegetarians." It's just like, it's just like <laughs> I'm an atheist because I don't believe in God and religion. No, that's not true. If I was an atheist, that means I believe in something. You <laughs> retards. <laughs> anyway. Oh, it's great. So, so that's the big, the big news in show business this <laughs> past week. Um, DV Recoil f found this really funny story. Um, <laughs> so he dropped it in, in our stupid news. Uh, Florida manatee orgy near Tampa Bay Highway causes world's most awkward traffic jam. Oh my god. People, people stopped <laughs> and took pictures and are looking at it. <laughs> Holy I'm like, god. oh my god. No one's ever seen this down there? They probably didn't even know it was a fucking orgy. <laughs> a dozen of the creatures were spotted by commuters offshore of Courtney Campbell Causeway. <laughs> does this... Does this rustling. Does, 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 does this count as animal said, porn? <laughs> Fox 13 said it received several calls from drivers commuting via the road, many of whom pulled over to watch the spectacle, reporting a possible whale in distress. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> like, that's great. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't even want to know. I don't want to know why the whale was in distress, so let's move on. <laughs> 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 the Florida Fish and Wildlife Cons Conservation Commission says that manatee mating season runs from March through November, meaning more traffic slowdowns could occur in the rare event that another manatee mating fall appears off the coast of Tampa Bay. It can't be too rare if there's a fucking season for it, you fucking retard. <laughs> Maybe they don't do it that close to shore. I don't give a shit. It's not rare. <laughs> If you make a season for something, it's not fucking rare, okay? <laughs> That's like saying games of Game of Thrones is very rare. They have eight seasons. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I don't oh, watch yeah. Got. Okay, I don't watch that shit. It's crazy. Um, since we talked about manatees, um, this past week a nine hundred pound man was transported to court. That was not me. I do not weigh 900 pounds, okay? <laughs> Maybe in the vicinity of 650. 
Maybe in the vicinity oh, of 650, and I'm not in Virginia. I'm very close to it. So, but anyway. <laughs> so this guy in Virginia, Virginia, Kenneth Hicks, 48, from Emporia, um, was scheduled to plead guilty in a cocaine conspiracy case. This past Monday. What the fuck are you doing at 900 pounds <laughs> in a cocaine conspiracy case? If you in a cocaine conspiracy case, lose some goddamn weight, motherfucker. <laughs> Use the cocaine. Get on a diet <laughs> regimen. Use the goddamn cocaine. They were going to use medical personnel to assess any medical issues that Hicks may have had. And depending on his weight, he could be carried out of his falling attached to the rear of a mobile home. It wasn't a, a medical condition. It was a mental condition because he was like, oh, man, I got all this cocaine. Don't know what to do with it. I need to lose some weight, but I don't know how. Motherfucker snort it. <laughs> oh my god that, how are they going to put a 900 pound man on a fucking stretcher you know how small those things are <laughs> oh I've seen it done have you watched my 900 pound life or whatever the fuck that shit is I've seen it done I've seen them remove fucking walls to get people out of homes <laughs> on two story buildings and I'm like that actually fucking happened I thought that shit was just like you know a fake thing on third watch back in the 90s no that's actually real. <laughs> <laughs> so so the plan was to have medical staff on site as well as the FBI, U.S. Marshals, local fi- the local fire department, and local PD. Um, <laughs> Dude's going to roll away. You better have everybody there. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, they would have they would have had to open a large hole in the wall of the structure in order to facilitate the use of a device capable of lifting the defendant's weight. I'm very glad you <laughs> finished that sentence after holding the wall. <laughs> Why? Harry's crane service was on standby just in case. <laughs> <laughs> the procedure may it's a they said um <laughs> the procedure may also require the removal of the ramp near his doorway and trees on the property. <laughs> like, God <laughs> this motherfucker ain't nine hundred pounds, he's nine thousand pounds. You removing fucking ramps and trees. God damn. They better get oh, some goddamn man. Air Force platforms out there so they don't sink into the ground while they're at it. Motherfuck. <laughs> But he's being charged, right? So, so he was being charged in a cocaine conspiracy to distribute during 2013 to 2017. So, how if big was he then? Point, if he's 900 pounds now, how big was he then? If he was distributing, <laughs> god damn, what the fuck was he doing? Fucking rolling around then, and then he got too big to fucking roll, so he got a dent in one side, and he wouldn't fucking roll anymore. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Holy fuck. Motherfucker, they put me in cuffs. I'll just eat my way. <laughs> like, I understand there are, are, are cases out there where people have health problems. This ain't a health problem. This is a fucking <laughs> mental ass problem. Snort right? the goddamn cocaine before your ass gets sent to federal prison so you can lose at least, I don't know, 10 pounds before you go in the next week. Like, shit. Well. <laughs> that boggles well. my mind right now. So there you go. So a 900-pound guy went to court. They were going to bring him back to the loading dock in the back of the courthouse. Oh, my God. <laughs> you might want to get the morgue ready because he's probably going to have to fucking end up in there. He's probably going to have a heart attack. God damn. Jesus right? Christ. It's like, oh, my God. Fucking <laughs> 900 fucking pounds and you're part of a fucking drug war. <laughs> like, that's what that is. That's a drug war. I don't care what anybody... That's a drug <laughs> war right there. God damn. He, that reminds me of the big fat Greeks you see in movies that are laying there in their couches and the pe- women are fanning them and feeding them grapes. That's what this dude is. Except he should have been like, give me the cocaine, baby. Like, holy <laughs> fuck. Can you imagine... Can you imagine having all that cocaine around you and you be a 900 pounds? Like, I hope I hope people give him hell in public. Like, shit. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. All right, so moving right along. <laughs> you know how when you're in high school, um, there's always, like, the valedictorian that speaks at graduation and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, the most popular of us... kid. What was that? I said, yeah, the popular kid. Well, it was the popular kid. God damn it. Don't deny it. We all know it. 
<laughs> well, Ohio um, has decided to get rid of the va valedictorian um, honors in an effort to better students' mental wellness. Only in Ohio, Ohio. Um, so they're getting rid of, oh, they're also getting rid of, obviously, the salutatorian honors. Because that's the opposite of valedictorian. That's but they're the still going to have version. <laughs> but see, but see what 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 makes me wonder how they're going to go about getting these people to talk is what are they going to say? The reason is for them talking, because they have to give them a reason. Well, so officials with the Mason High School uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio, that's the one that's getting rid of this, said they were removing the honors and will instead recognize students who have achieved outstanding academic success through a multitude of pathways. They're still going to have to label these people some way, shape, or form. Principal Dodd said the move would help curb the competition culture at the school and permit students to focus on other things. The school would continue to recognize those with a high average. Students who achieved a 4.0 or higher will earn summa cum laude. Well, the funny thing is they said it was to cut down on competition. I don't know too many kids <laughs> that were fucking competing over who was smarter. I'll tell you that right now, because most of us didn't get two shits. We just wanted to get fucking graduated. I didn't realize that there's higher than a 4.0. Well, oh, yeah, and, my, I know somebody that graduated a 4.75, and I'm still kind of confused on how that happened. There, there is, there, well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's stupid, but there is some cases that there are cases where your average can be over 4.0, but most colleges don't accept anything over 4.0. Jesus Christ. Well, students with a 3.75 to 3.99 will receive magna cum laude honors. Those with a 3.51 to 3.74 will earn designated cum laude. The school originally recognized one valedictorian and, and salutatorian based on a student's GPA ranking. So no more of that. They're gone. Oh, Bye. Well, I got a 3 point something, so I'm happy with that. I got a DG. Done gadgeted. <laughs> I don't know how I graduated. I don't know how I got pulled off a three point something because I, I fucked up big time my junior year. Then I went and to basic in between those two years and came back and my shit got fucked up. So the principal made me do all these after school shits for two weeks and I still pulled off a three point something. And I was like, Okay, fuck you, Mr. Principal Guy. Go suck a dick. <laughs> well, one student, a former student, I should say, um, said that she remembered having a few mental breakdowns in fear of dropping Rankins. <laughs> and she stated, I know there were kids well over a 4.0 who were barely in the top percent, in the well, top 10%. The only ones that I feel sorry for are the ones whose parents get on to them, and it's actually the school's fault them dropping in yeah, rankings right. and grades and i've seen that more times than not i've got friends who's got kids and their grades are shit and they should not be but these other right. kids that are doing it just for uh, my vagina has sand in it and my ass is bleeding <laughs> you can go fuck yourself oh man um <laughs> <laughs> So here we go. Uh, Southwest passenger allegedly kicked off flight over joke about vodka. Vodka or Chewbacca? Vodka. Oh, vodka. Vodka. Yeah. The Russian jank. Vodka. <laughs> Thought you said vodka. This, <laughs> this flight went from Sacramento to L.A. Um, according to witnesses, Peter Uzalak, um <laughs> <laughs> was bound for Austin, Texas, with a layover at LAX. However, while on the tarmac, a maintenance light came on, and the plane was forced to return to the gate to to the gate to check it out. Oof, that was a tough sentence. <laughs> while the plane was working on the maintenance issue, the flight was delayed again due to a new due to a need to refuel. At this point, Uzalag said the attendant started handing out water to passengers since the flight had been delayed for a few hours, and a man sitting near him made a joke, um, which, <laughs> which went like, they should be passing out vodka because we've been waiting so long. He that got kicked silly. off for that? 
Yeah. What the <laughs> Flight fuck? attending <gasps> came by and was like, I don't think that, I don't think that, and I didn't like your joke. So because you didn't off. like the joke, you kicked someone off the plane. Yeah. What airline was that? Uh, look, Southwest. Okay, go fuck yourself, Southwest. I'm never using you again. <laughs> police were called, and the police did not charge the man with a crime. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. I made a joke. I said they should be handing out vodka instead of water. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, I swear. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Um, Another, this one has really gotten to me, Um, this last story. Because we'll talk about it, but it's, like, it's outrageous. I'm sure you guys have heard, you know, we all take the fucking SATs and we get scored and all that fun stuff. Um. Well, now the SATs are going to use a diversity score for students applying to college. Okay. What's yes. a diversity score? So they are going to be using this adversity score. Um, they're going to use 15 factors from the from each individual person that's taken the test, um, including the crime rate and poverty level from the student's high school and neighborhood. They'll also look at what? whether the parents were college graduates or college educated. Oh, their, hell no. Household income, all that fun stuff. Um, so far, 50 colleges have used it in making a decision about a prospective student's chances, and the college board plans to expand that to 150 the higher learning institutions in the fall. The goal is to use it broadly by 2021. Now, here's here's the other part of this adversity score. The student does not get to see the adversity score. It is only seen by the college admissions teams. First off, that's discriminatory as motherfucker. Secondly, there isn't shit we can do about it because most colleges are private in some way, shape, or form. Exactly. And here's my thing. So my brother, my sister, and I, we all would have gotten the same exact adversity score, right? But I scored 400 points less than my brother and my sister did on the SATs. So am I at an advantage because I'm dumber or a disadvantage because I'm dumber? Well, not only that, they're going by your family history and where you live and where your income is. Like, what does any of that have to do with your personal... Uh, morals and what you want to accomplish in life. I mean, yes, it does play a factor, but go ahead, exactly. recoil. Like, recoil. Well, it's, it's just, it just seems like they are proud to have a lower expectation of a certain demographic of people, which to me is absolutely disgusting. Yeah, right. Exactly. It, wow, like it's it's insane. Yale University is one of the schools that is already using adversity scores. Um, The Dean of Undergraduate Admissions at Yale said the adversity score is literally affecting every application we look at. It has been a part of the success story to help diversify our freshman class. Oh, that's why it's 99% rich folk that go to fucking Yale. (laughs) I mean, that's the problem. (laughs) You've got some really genius poor people out here that are trying to get into these top-notch colleges and they can't get into it and this is the reason right here i mean i never would have been able to get in because nobody in my family immediate family ever went to college most of them didn't graduate most of them didn't take the sat or act so i would have been fucked and making below twenty thousand dollars a year in our family yeah i've been really fucked like (laughs) right instead you can just go to go to a twenty five hundred to five thousand dollar trade school and actually go out and make a fucking living and not have student debt for the rest of your life. Right, yeah, right. right. But well, oh, these, son of a bitch. these people go, so many people go to college and, and end up with enormous, enormous amounts of debt and have a degree that is never going to pay a fucking dime. Right. Which is why my brother well, David, didn't go to college because he didn't want the debt and all that for the rest of his life and I don't blame him. 
David Coleman, the chief executive of the College Board, said there are a number of amazing students who may have scored less on the SAT, but have accomplished more. We can't sit on our hands and ignore the disparities of wealth reflected in the SAT. But they go by, I mean, they they even include your race into this adversity score. It's race, sex, you know, like all that fun stuff, whether your parents are college educated and what your family is making and I don't the mind the that you're living that. in. Like like how many people there's enough college camps going on and if we all know about the major one right now. Um so so who's to say that some rich family is going to look at this and say, well, this is going to affect your chances. So we're going to set up a PO box in the, in the poorest city in the state. And we'll say that that's where you live. Well, we're no, just no. going to, you know, like make no mistake. If you have enough money, you're going to anywhere you want to anyway. Yeah. No, I know. But I mean, you know, like, well, they're, well, they're telling you right there that they're picking the ones that have the money that have quote unquote success stories, because if you look at Yale, most of the kids that come out of Yale have never had to work a day in their life. Their families have it made. Their families have degrees out the fucking ass. They're telling you right there what the secret is. If you, if you, if your family, <laughs> just have a lot of money, <laughs> right? If your family isn't successful in all of those, all of those categories, your chances are not good at going to Yale or Harvard or whatever. Right. Which is really well, that's, sad. That's the whole point in the program, though, is that they're trying to force people into it based on them be, being at a disadvantage. And, well, and it's not just Yale and Harvard. It's There's a t- 50 schools that have been using it already, and it's going to go to 150 in the fall. So, like, right now, people are taking the SATs, and but you don't even get to see your own fucking score. You don't even get to see like the average so, score for the kids in your town taking the SAT. I mean, I understand using that as a demographic statistic, you know, outlook on things. This, these are the people who uh, go further. These are the people who are successful in these colleges, stuff like that. But to to ingrain it into an application and to approve and disapprove someone based on that. You're a fucking yeah. piece of shit, and you should be ashamed and not able to sleep at night, honestly, because you're not giving anyone a chance at that point. I think it should be on merit, and I mean, you know, like it sucks. Yeah, it's based on test scores and grades, but that's exactly how it should be and stay. They just need to right. change like, change the testing altogether. It, it really should be based on cognitive ability and retention ability. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I remember the ACT and ACT, and that was some of the dumbest shit I've ever fucking had to answer in my entire life. Shit that, A, I've never used a day in my fucking life, minus a couple of algebraic and um, ge- geometric algorithms and some grammar uh, grammar stuff where I have to write shit. But other than that, 90% of those fucking tests are shit that none of us will ever use the rest of our lives. I don't care what fucking field you go into. Whether it's corporate or trade or what the fuck, you'll never use 90% of that shit. Well, and it's it's one of those. It's like, I, I know I suck at taking tests. I'm not good at it. I can't sit there and, you know, like, you wanted me to remember all this shit. Like, even, even stuff like history class or whatever class I was in. If, something that we talked about. All fucking week, and I knew forwards and backwards. We, if we had a test on it that Friday, and we, you know, I would fucking fail. Yeah. Because I suck at taking. I can't do it. Like my brain does not compute. And that's that. Well, that's like the fucking so, as asvab. The asvab is set up in a way that will fuck you over too. For a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of geniuses yeah. get really low test scores at the asvab, and I'm like, how is that possible? Then you look at the ASVAB and you're like, a fucking, you know, genius probably couldn't answer all these correctly. And it, cause some right. of them are, it's like going to the DMV and doing your fucking written test. Oh my God. Fuck that goddamn thing. <laughs> Fuck that goddamn thing with a goddamn rusty ass fucking steel pipe with goddamn barbed wire wrapped around it, pour gasoline on it and light it on fire. That's how you rape that motherfucker. Like, fuck that test. <laughs> <laughs> 
anyway. you know what happened when I was in high school? We, um, we had drivers, like the driver's education class for one marketing period, like one quarter, um, your senior year or junior year in, in sort of gym. And I took, we all took the test, right? I passed it, but the teacher used the wrong answer key. And so half of us failed because he used the wrong before. answer key. And then we had to retake it because it had already been sent to the DMV and shit. Like there was no, there were no take backs and he used the wrong fucking answer key again. So I, I had to go to the DMV and take the fucking test there. And then it was just like, I'm like, oh my God, this is on the fucking computer screen and you're being watched like a hawk and it's not, you know, like you can't jump through questions. And that's what I always did. I always answered the ones that I knew <laughs> and then spent more times on, you know, like on other stuff. But <laughs> so I almost failed it at the DMV. <laughs> I'm like fucking asshole. I'll, I'll, I, I got one of the fucking questions wrong that I... Me and my mom were joking. It was about who has most wrecks, and it's the it's like a group of the older folks. And we would joke about it. And I kept like every time she would do something stupid on the road, I would I would be like, "Mom, you do know that the average number of wrecks per blah 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 is this age group, right?" And she was like, "Yes, though I know." The fucking question on the goddamn test was completely different. Than what I'd ever seen. And the answers wasn't what it should have been. Like the way you would answer it in real fucking life. It was like, really? And my mom was like, hey, that's the one that you kept talking about. I was like, and it's not my fault. Anyway. Um. <laughs> that's all the news that I have for this wonderful week. Outstanding. Well, if we're not on social media, you're going to have all of our website links down in the podcast description. Dysfunctional Veterans, DV Farm, DV Radio, the DV Forum. Speaking of the DV Forum, Recoil, since you've not been here in almost a month, do you want to tell them what that is and how they can get there and why they should be there? Well, if you haven't already, head on over to dvbarracks.com. That is our forum, which is our place to hang out and be DVs away from social media and the prying eyes of friends, families, and coworkers. Head over to dvbarracks.com. Once you get there, create yourself an account using either your Facebook login or your email. Once you have an account created, go to the top right-hand corner of the screen and click on your profile. You can change your picture to any picture you want to use. You can change your name to any call sign you want to use. And then you are free to use the forum in anonymity. It's a lot of fun over there. It's your typical DV fuckery, but there is also my personal favorite section, which is the peer support section. And that is brothers and sisters like you and me looking out for brothers and sisters like you and me. So if you haven't already, head on over to dvbarracks.com. One last time, that's dvbarracks. Dot com. You heard it from Recoil. Head over to dvbarracks.com to join the DV Forum right now. The dvbarracks.com DV Forum. Go to it now and get away from social media today. Um, So go over there and do that. If you stayed on this long, you heard the Patreon ad that was in the show tonight. And as a special treat for me to you, if you go over to Patreon and give a dollar, you will have access to the behind the scenes on how I made that uh, that, uh, that, that ad. Um, I'm not going to have it as long as it actually took me uh because you will be there all fucking day um but i will show you uh some ins and outs of how myself and recoil uh use the doll that we use if you don't know what a doll is it's a digital audio workstation so if uh you want to look forward to that and and be able to view that go over to patreon that's patreon.com forward slash dv radio you can give a dollar and everybody will have access to that video that is a patreon member um Twitter at DV underscore DV radio, even though we'll probably be off of there before long. We're looking at uh, other video formats. I'm looking into one right now. We'll probably migrate some stuff over there. Podcast will be on YouTube still. Um, if you're looking for our podcast and you're listening for the first time tonight, go to Podbean, look for DV radio or Stitcher, Google Play. A shit ton of other fucking podcast streamers have us as well. And I can't thank you guys enough for putting us there. I just can't keep up with them, so I do apologize for that. We're getting on Spotify slowly but surely. Holy fuck. It takes, <laughs> yeah. People don't understand. I have to download the old podcast, edit it, and re-upload it because I don't have all the old build. Anyway, um, I think that's it. Don't forget about the uh, 22nd annual 
anniversary dash and bike run at Jimmy's Old Town Tavern in Herndon, Virginia. It starts at 8 a.m. on May 25th. That's next Saturday. If you're in the area or you're able to be in the area or live around that area, go check it out. Some of the proceeds that are from something there, I'm not exactly sure, benefits the DV Farm. And thank you to the MC group that uh, helped to uh, assist in putting that together. Uh, Oink, anything for our listeners tonight? Negative. Uh, just, uh, you know, we're all veterans. Keep treating each other with respect if you can. Uh, I know there's someone out there that are pain in the ass, but uh, they're still our brother and sisters, so keep looking out for them. And Google? Um, there are now 23 Democratic candidates running for president. Outstanding. 23 more reasons I will not vote. Recoil. <laughs> <laughs> As always, be safe. Keep looking out for each other, fuckers. Yes, for DB6, who left early as always, and his hobo ended up in my front fucking yard. Google, oink, recoil. This has been Barrett's Talk. I am Boner Wood. Until next week, fucksicles. Bye-bye. Hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. I'm out. I gotta go eat something. Oh, oh yeah, sure. leave it. Come, come in late and leave early. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? <laughs> well, I haven't eaten today, really. This is going on B-roll, Google. I'm going to let everybody hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I gotta go find out where the dog is. He never came back up after he was <laughs> <downstairs. Sorry. laughs> he's, he's probably all curled up in the bed. Probably. No, he never came back upstairs. He oh. ran down and never came back up. But leave us, Google. Leave us since you don't love us anymore. Everybody's <laughs> going to hear this after the show on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh I don't believe you. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Yeah, let me go eat something. Yeah, I'm going to get something to eat, too. Yeah, I'm I got to crash. I got to piss eat. like a racehorse. <laughs> I'm going to eat. <laughs> <laughs>